Hello, my honey bunches of oats. It's Miss Cousins here, and today we are going to go through our introduction to evolution theories. So this week and going in for the rest of the school year, we are in our last unit. I know crazy time is flying by even with at-home learning. So Mr. Perkins and I have decided our last unit is going to cover the evolution theories. But before we can get into the evolution theories, you have to have some background on where these theories came from. And that is why we are doing this PowerPoint. So today, your objective, so you should be able to describe the development of the theories of evolution, as well as explain how evolution actually occurs. All right, so this is a major question I want you guys to think about. We saw the evidence, but how? How does evolution actually happen? Okay, so theories explaining evolution. We have two major theories. Everyone say it with me. One, two. We have two major theories, okay? We have this gentleman over here who is known as Lamarck, and then we have this gentleman over here who is known as Darwin. So we are going to talk about each of their theories and how it contributes to the theory of evolution as a whole. But first, some commonalities between them. So if you're working on the worksheet that I provided for you to do these notes, you will see that a common idea or a central idea that both of these scientists shared is that organisms seem suited for their jobs and their environment. Okay, so this right here is a picture of a hummingbird and you see that the hummingbird has a very long beak. All right, start thinking, why would a hummingbird have a really long beak? What does that do? What does that help? Well, it helps them for their job in their specific environment because the type of nectar that they get from the various um, flowers, their beak, the flowers are actually very elongated. So their beak helps them to get in there. All right, so adaptation. Adaptation is a characteristic that helps an organism survive. Adaptation helps an organism survive. Typically, adaptations are helpful. Adaptations are helpful. So now, a quick little activity. I want you guys to identify the adaptation. So looking at these three pictures, we have a giraffe over here. Then we have at the top a turtle. And then over here on the side, we have a crab. So look at the pictures and on your notes, write out what adaptation you may see. You guys have one minute. Ready, set, go. Okay, it's been one minute. Make sure you have your items written down as far as what the adaptations are. So now let's get into who these scientists are. So who is Lamarck? Who is this? Well, John Baptiste Lamarck, he was a French scientist who was the premier authority of invertebrate zoology in the early 1800s. Invertebrate means that they do not have a backbone. So he studied animals without backbones. And fun fact, a lot of the organisms that make up our whole world, and when we're talking about organisms, I'm specifically talking about animals, are invertebrates. They don't have backbones. Just fun fact, okay? So he studied botany. Botany is the study of plants. Zoology, zoology is the study of the animals, and wrote many scientific papers and books, including a paper where he is credited to be the first person to use the term biology. And what does biology stand for? We know bio equals life, Biology equals study of. So biology is the study of life. He studied animals and plants. Hello, people. Also, he is famous for writing the very first theory of biological evolution. And we are going to learn what that is right now. So Lamarck's theory was that organisms acquire and or develop adaptations to meet their needs in an environment. Specifically, an organism can change its physical traits by using its body in certain ways. So the organism can actually change what it's doing by using its body in certain <coughs> ways. This characteristics that an organism acquires during its life are then passed on to an offspring. That is Lamarck's theory. So let's put it in action. So Lamarck's theory. So first we have this very first crab right here by itself. So he's exercising his claws to make it grow larger. So he's literally just exercising, exercising, and then boom, he has a 
larger claw, but then bam, his claw is now huge. And because he was exercising so much, his claw grew and now he is going to pass on this acquired trait to his offspring down here at the final picture. Based off of what I just said with the crab in explaining Lamarck's theory in action, I want you guys to take one minute and write down the giraffe evolution according to Lamarck. So I gave you a hint right here. It says stretch. So you guys have one minute. Ready, set, go. Okay, your one minute is up. So write down what you thought happened between the giraffes. How did it go from here all the way up here? according to Lamarck. So why was Lamarck wrong? Well, there's a couple reasons. Acquired traits are not inherited. So you see, I have a bodybuilder over here. Just because this male is a huge bodybuilder, that does not mean that its offspring is going to be a huge bodybuilder as well. It's not going to happen. The only traits in DNA are inherited. Only the traits that are actually in your deoxyribonucleic acid in your genes, those are the ones that are passed down from offspring to offspring. There has to be a genetic component. So this is one reason why he was wrong. Another reason, organisms don't evolve. In evolution, in the theory of evolution, we often talk about populations and it's populations that are evolving, that are adapting over time. It is not one single organism. Next, Charles Darwin. Who is Charles Darwin? Well, he was a British scientist who wrote many papers in geology, which is the study of the earth, and zoology throughout the mid 1800s. He took five year round around the world voyages aboard a ship called the HMS Beagle and his studies of the Galapagos Islands are world famous even to this day. That's right guys, he took all these trips and he kept visiting this place called the Galapagos Islands and there is where he came up with his theory of evolution known as natural selection. So on his voyage, he made many scientific discoveries, brought home many specimens and formed theories about how species are related to each other. He wrote several books to support his theory, natural selection. So Darwin's theory, what is natural selection? So organisms born with the best adaptations survive and pass on their traits to the offspring. Organisms without these adaptations are going to die and they do not reproduce. So over time, the population changes as more organisms inherit the adaptation. So let's see this one in an application. Let's see it in practice. So Darwin's theory. So you have a crab and you see that there is this little baby crab that has a slightly bigger claw, all right? So what we see is that the crab is born with a slightly larger claw and that is making him better suited for his environment. So he's able to get more food. Whereas some of his other counterparts they can't get the food, so they die off. Now, you see that the crab with the largest claw survives best and he reproduces the most. So this big crab right here, he has his larger claw. And because he's better suited for his environment, he's able to find a mate and they make babies. And now their babies have this large claw as well. And this large claw is a new adaptation that is genetically in this population to help them to reproduce, to survive and reproduce. So eventually all the crabs have the adaptation, the population evolved, the population evolved. So one day a crab is born with an even larger claw. So we already had large claws, but look at this bad boy right here with this even larger claw. So natural selection will continue when the population evolves further. So the population evolves further. I want you guys to think, how could this even larger claw happen? What are some reasons why there might be a larger claw present in the population? Think about it, because we're gonna get into it next week. So if you don't know this word by now, you need to know it. Say it with me, natural selection, one, two, natural, Selection, one, two, natural selection. And it's the survival of the fittest. 
Natural selection is the survival of the fittest, meaning you're most fit when you're able to survive and reproduce. Boom, natural selection. But there are some factors that affect natural selection, one being the environmental change. So if the environment around you is changing, this may indeed cause adaptations to happen within organisms. Number two, competition. If we're all in the same environment and there's a limited amount of resources, there's going to be competition. I am going to go after this food because I have to feed my family just like you have to feed your family. And last but not least, number three, the variation or the differences in traits. Going back to when we were talking about genetics, it's the reason why you don't look identical to your mom or you don't look identical to your father. It's all because of these variations, all righty? So now, oh, I can't go forward. So this is the last slide that I want you guys to focus on. And look at your notes because there is a 10 question quick check to see if you guys have been paying attention. All right, see you guys later.